Hello everyone. Welcome to the NPTEL TL Live Interaction Session for Week 2 on the Rapid Manufacturing Course. The course ID for the course is NOC 22 ME 74. I hope I am audible to every one of you. This is Palkin Gupta, PMRF Scholar at Material Science and Engineering Department at IIT Kanpur. And uh, the course instructors for this course are Professor J. Ram Kumar and Professor Amandeep Singh, Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Kanpur. So, in today's lecture, we'll be going through the overview of the lectures that were discussed in week 2 and then we'll be solving some sample problems. Okay. So, the week 2 lectures focus on product development processes. So let us first uh, focus what is a product and what is a product development life cycle. So a product is anything that satisfies a need or a want. So anything that you need or you want consists makes a product in marketing. So for example, for lightning purposes, you need uh, a CFL tube that is a product or uh, for writing you need a pen or a pencil so that becomes a product. In business product is commonly termed as a merchandise and in manufacturing whatever you buy as raw material and se uh, sell as a finished good is said to be a product. Suppose you have uh, brought, bought a long uh, aluminium rod so that is a raw material and then you uh, sell certain sections of that so they are the finished products say suppose a small lens of one inches so they are the finished goods so that are the product also there are certain service based products in the market what are th uh, these service based products they are uh, basically the consultancies that you get from various companies uh, regarding any of your uh, say business plan or uh, marketing strategies that constitute your, uh, that services also constitute as product or the after sale services or you say the uh, suggestive uh, services that various companies have to suggest a better product for you. So the, all that constitutes a product. Now what is a product development life cycle. So product development life cycle is a sequence of all the activities that must be performed by a company. Okay, so it's a sequence of all activities that must be performed by a company starting from conceptualization, then development, manufacturing and selling a final product. So this constitutes, this whole plan constitutes a product development life cycle. So these activities can further include the market researches that what a products already exist in the market, what are their costs, how they are manufactured, what is the quality etc. So all these constitutes uh, the activities that come in product development and also the uh, marketing planning or the management decisions or the investments they also come under product development life cycles. So we have an idea what is a product and what is a product development life cycle. Now let us go to uh, product development. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so before going to product characteristics we see what is product development. So it focuses on uh, it goes from engineering designs. It comes from engineering design processes 
that you need to follow whenever you conceptualize or develop a product. So they are defined as whenever you devise a system or a component or a product that satisfies the need of the customers. So satisfying the needs of the customers is really important in market these days. If the customer is not satisfied, then a whole product goes to waste. Okay, now this process consists of several sequential and simultaneous processes that uh, we'll see in further slides to finally develop a product ready that is ready to use. It can be developing a product or a prototype. So this prototype will always uh, function uh, exactly like the entire product and uh, shall be made using all the manufacturing processes and procedures that are required for making the actual product. So now, what are the characteristics of a good product? So the main characteristics of a product are that it should have a functional or performance aspect, it should have ease of operation. It should be easy to maintain. It should have good aesthetics and a suitable price that is affordable for the customers. So what is the functional aspect? Functional aspect implies that the product meets the fundamental reason for its demand. So it implies that product should meet the fundamental reason for its demand. So why the product was needed in the first place? That reason should be justified by the product. So that is its functional aspect. Say for example, you have a pen. So it should write well. It should have a good flow of the ink. So that is it's one of the functions. So if it is not writing well, then it is of no use to anyone. So it doesn't have a, a functional or performance aspect, then that is a waste product. So it should uh, do its job really well. Now it's up to the customer how they exploit its characteristics. Okay, it's the choice of the customer to exploit the characteristics of the product. Now, the second aspect that comes is the operational ease. It should be easy to use. Okay. Uh, it should not be like you are facing really hard time in figuring out how to use that uh, a particular product and it, uh, and a product should never be like it should uh, it should never require highly skilled operators so uh, like uh, a big uh, easy to use for a beginner as well okay and it should be adaptable to people having varying degree of uh, skills so the product should be adaptable by different peoples having varying degree of skill set. Okay. Now comes the ease of maintenance. It should be easy to maintain. So, for example, a very simple example from our day-to-day -day life. Whenever we go to buy uh, clothes, so what do we want? We want clothes such that they are easy to maintain. It should not be like we have to maintain a particular uh, washing regime for that. Or it should never be like uh, we have to use a particular kind of detergent for it. 
so it should be uh, the maintenance the repair and uh, it's it should be sustainable and these should be readily available within the market so and it should be durable like it should work for a sufficiently long time and dependable dependable as in it should give you reliable results it should not happen that a particular machine is uh, giving you certain results in, uh, on one day and it is giving you erroneous results on the second day if this happens then uh, your dependability on the machine just drops to zero so in such a case the machine is or the product is not dependable or uh, reliable okay and durability is actually the length of the service life or the endurance of the product so durability can be defined as so uh, durability it is one point is length of the service life for example you have a hacksaw blade so how long can it serve say oh, for a month or a two or 10 days or 15 days that is the length of the service life so after fifth suppose its service life is 15 days you can now say that after 15 days it's not durable anymore it's not giving you proper cuts or proper surface finish after it is cut cutting a certain object and Uh, or you can say the endurance of the product in very simple terms endurance of the product can be said how much load it can bear or how much stress cycles it can undergo so a similar example if you cut a really hard materials using that same blade may uh, maybe it uh, works only for 10 days in such a case so uh, th that's how you define endurance the what stress cycles or uh, stress times it can endure next is aesthetics this aspect is being given a uh, really high importance these days now it is mainly concerned with molding the final shape of the product it has less to do with the functioning but more to do with the appearance of the product okay so uh, this may be uh, just uh, uh, in regards to the junctions or the joints that are there in different shapes okay so uh, these are more important uh, for consumer goods or fashion goods for example when uh, small kids go to buy certain pencils they are more fascinated by the pencils having some cartoon prints on them so that's the that comes the aesthetic part so how good a particular product is looking or uh, how pleasant it is looking so since it has become a very important aspect so aesthetics uh, is uh, mainly uh, taken care by the industrial designers and function is basically taken care of by the mechanical designers so they come to a confluence at a certain point or uh, that is or a break even point after certain trade offs and at this point there is an compromise between the aesthetics and the functions to achieve what are known as the consumer products that are finally thrown into the market for the use by the people now so now some aesthetic recommendations uh, can be uh, use of different colors or materials or paintings on the products or uh, maybe texture supplements they can be so it can be colors textures paintings etc these are some of the aesthetic elements okay or uh, they can be in a shape 
uh, that are similar to some familiar objects outer contours that can be there now the last part of a product characteristic is the price to customer the product should always remain affordable for the customer if the price of the product is really high then the customer cannot afford it and then it becomes really difficult for him or her to purchase so in such a case your products won't be able to sell well so you should have an affordable price that justif also justifies the functionality so it should not be like that it's uh, uh, at the cost of the functionality you reduce the price it should have an optimum price that should consider its function as well and the pocket of the customer so in uh, products uh, when you have revenue so this is the positive side this is your profit and this is the negative side which is your investment basically so you invest in uh, research initially to uh, the market research or the research about oh, what products are required in the market by the people and then you go on to design and development then you design the solution of uh, the problem that has arisen in the market and then you uh, fabricate certain prototypes and uh, then you test out if that prototype is working well for the prob decided problem then you go on to generate the tools and uh, launch the product so tooling is basically uh, planning the manufacturing cycle or having certain dies or molds or to purchase certain raw parts so this is mainly concerned with designing of the manufacturing process and then you finally go on to the production when you go on to the production after a certain level when you have uh, reached a sufficient amount of sale then you start to make the profit so it should not be like to have very high profits you keep the selling price too high that it is not affordable it should always be affordable now going on to product development the very first step is engineering design process in this process we first identify the need first step is to identify the need so uh, what is a need basically like if you didn't uh, had the need to write on paper then pencils or pens wouldn't have existed so identifying a need is really important and uh, then conceptualizing the solutions post that conceptualization of the solution to develop products or prototypes okay now when you have uh, done this and you have uh, done certain studies on mechanical testing or uh, whatever function it was supposed to perform then you have a ready to manufacture product or a prototype so this is an engineering design process so it evolves from a sequential process and goes on to an integrated process wherein all steps are performed in a simultaneous fashion okay so the four logical group of activities in product development so this is really important and these are rigorously followed in any product development uh, series whenever you go on to develop a product okay so and the four sequence uh, the sequences are first you identify an opportunity or a demand for a new product first it identification of an opportunity or a demand if there is no demand 
then the product will not be sale okay so no demand is equals to zero sale of the product okay so uh, hence we should very carefully examine the opportunity or the demand that is existing in the market if there is no demand existing in the market then there is no point in developing a, per a particular product okay then we create technical specifications for the new product idea now what is this creating the technical specifications so when we were identifying the problem or the requirement of a product we had certain functions in mind that the particular product need to perform so the functions that the product needs to perform form the technical specifications the functions that should be performed by the product constitute the technical specifications for example what can be the technical specifications uh, suppose you are going uh, for a new shoe manufacturing of a shoe so the, the specification can be a certain degree of comfort level a certain degree of uh, thickness of the sole or a particularly customized size that can be some of the technical specifications of uh, the new product idea okay now so this all is uh, complemented with the market research all this is always complement all this is always complemented by the market research wherein you take care of the requirements of the customer the prices they can afford similar products that are existing in the market their strengths and weaknesses so that you can always improvise on the weaknesses and make better products and uh, take ideas from your competitors all this includes the identifying uh, in, is included in identification of the problem and generation or conceptualizing of the specifications of the product now when you have the technical specifications and you have the solution of uh, the problem that you have identified you go on to develop the manufacturing process as to what manufacturing techniques shall be required in developing of that product for example if you will be requiring turning of the product or you will be requiring certain embossing or welding etc Uh, or you need to directly purchase certain raw material or you need to fabricate a part of it so all that comes in a manufacturing process planning and then i'll finally you fabricate the new product which is ready to go into the market now as we had seen that product development goes from sequential to an integrated process so in the sequential process Uh, each of these four groups occurs sequentially that is one after the other they do not go in a simultaneous fashion instead they follow a sequential manner so they go one after the other so research and development is uh, equivalent to identification of the problem your uh, market analysis 
market analysis can be about the existing product the feedback from the customers who are the direct beneficiaries of your product then uh, shortcomings of uh, the existing product the marketing strategies applied by your competitors etc then you go on to have the design uh, for your object okay you go find a suitable design of the problem you rework around it until a suitable design is found so how this iterative designing is done this is done by having a design and then performing simulation if it functions well or not so for uh, manufacturing of new designs of cars you may see that every time building a new uh, an entire new car is not possible so they design and redesign and rework on a particular design perform simulation see if the new design is feasible or not and until it satisfies their minimum criteria they go on to may uh, in the iterative process and then once uh, you have uh, finalized design you design the manufacturing process as was mentioned earlier the definition of the manufacturing process is important as what parts you need to purchase directly what you will be building yourself okay what uh, will be the manufacturing techniques that shall be used different manufacturing techniques to be used all this comes under the definition of the manufacturing process and once you have a final design and you have conceptualized your manufacturing process you go on to the final production of your part okay so in the final production you either make a prototype or the actual product which is ready to go to the market to use by the beneficiary okay so next uh, uh, after uh, sequential uh, product development we go to simultaneous or integrated product development so why was there a need to move to a simultaneous or integrated product development because of the disadvantage of uh, the sequential method which is the uh, weakness of the links between the functional departments which is the weakness of the links between the functional departments so uh, since they operated in a sequential manner it was just that they obtained the only the relevant information from the previous step they didn't uh, know the exact know how or the technicalities of uh, what had uh, been done by the design department but actually just took the relevant information or the cad drawings and just simply uh, say cad drawings from the design department and developed the manufacturing process according to it so the uh, their links were weak Uh, that uh, should work in cooperation to develop a new product now to overcome this 
so there was a change in steps from sequential to simultaneous one that is all these uh, steps shall be performed in a simultaneous manner it should not be uh, like once the design is complete then only the manufacturing process will start it will go on in a simultaneous manner and this is what is known as concurrent engineering philosophy so it is an integrated and systematic approach to the design of products and their related processes integrated means they go in a combined fashion and not as individual steps they move in combined fashion and not as individual steps okay the including manufacturing testing and services so a sequential uh, know how of uh, the process is uh, market and r&d analysis okay so first uh, similar to that there is a market and r&d analysis as, uh, according to the requirements or the demands that are prevalent in the market then you have a concurrent product or a process design in which all these processes in this circle they are done in a simultaneous fashion that are manufacturability its cost its ergonomics simulation testing reliability entire process plan and assembly and uh, once this is designed we go on to the production scale so this concurrent approach is effectively is very effective in uh, reduction of cost and it compresses a cycle time for product development increases flexibility and raises productivity as well as efficiency okay so this way the simultaneous or integrated product development approach is more uh, effective than the sequential approach now uh, what a generic product development process looks like so it has the very first step need recognition then what are the design specifications or uh, the solutions to the problem then conceptualization of the design an initial design and then we have a detailed design and finally it goes to the production and after that marketing for actual sale actual uh, use by the consumers so need recognition uh, has acquiring information then after you have acquired the information there is information analysis which is based on different parameters needs so you dev that is there is a matrix analysis wherein uh, you have uh, certain criteria pertaining to your needs or uh, parameters uh, needs and uh, parameters uh, that define if the product is uh, meeting those requirements or not then you have the, uh, then you interpret uh, this entire information and prioritize between the essential and the desirable uh, characteristics so prioritizing is a trade off between essential and desirable characteristics okay and uh, then you finally define your problem statement then uh, uh, after the definition of this problem statement you uh, uh, define your design specifications uh, you prepare a list of merits which that the, your product will have these qualities 
and then you benchmark those depending on your internal uh, they are different benchmarking internal benchmarking that uh, correspond to the benchmarks set by different departments of your own organization or the existing products from your own organization then you have generic benchmarking which is uh, to follow the common standards set up by the industry and then you have competitive benchmarking which is uh, taking into consideration the benchmarks set by your competitor and then you assign the values to different uh, merits and upon uh, uh, and as per the values assigned to these different merits of the product you conceptualize a design that is you propose a particular design based on uh, the problem and uh, the functions that it should have so that has a problem formulation then you analyze what uh, functions it is uh, your design is performing and uh, then you propose a solution now you uh, check the principle of your solution and you have a technical evaluation and economic evaluation if technical evaluation if it is meeting all the technical standards and economic evaluation if it is economic uh, to the customer and then you have a final concept so it can uh, out, uh, you propose suppose you propose 80 designs so after going through all the steps maybe you are having only five of them then uh, you have a detailed designing that is the final design of the component you have the cost estimate of it and then you go towards prototyping for prototyping you go to production where you define the manufacturing plan and finally the marketing stage wherein you actually go to the market and try to sell your product as per its functions and merits so let us uh, begin with certain sample uh, problems uh, that was all about uh, the summary of the le lectures that were covered in week 2 and uh, let us begin with certain sample problems so the uh, questions in this course are majorly of theoretical nature so question 1 is mold inserts can be built with internal cooling channels that follow the contour of the cavity beneath the surface true or false so the answer is true because of the flexibility of the rapid manufacturing processes and use of additive manufacturing technology we can have complex contours so using uh, these uh, additive manufacturing technologies we can have internal cooling channels as well so next is indirect tooling uses master patterns to produce a mold or a die so uh, we had already seen indirect tooling in the last lecture still uh, we'll just quickly go through what is indirect tooling so in as the term suggests it is an indirect method of manufacturing a tool it is an indirect method of manufacturing a particular tool all right so what is a tool here it can be a mold a die an insert anything like that so to prepare a mold and a die we need master patterns so these master patterns when produced using additive manufacturing technology and for 
are the used to make molds or dies or inserts is termed as indirect tooling. So the answer is true. Okay. So uh, using additive manufacturing, you prepare a pattern or a product that uh, a product that you finally need, and that product is used to prepare a mold so that you can have a batch production of that product. So this is your indirect tooling. Question three. Direct tooling is used where the additive process builds the actual molds. True or false? So let us again see the meaning of direct tooling. As the name suggests, direct tooling means that you fabricate the tool directly with the help of additive manufacturing technology. So such a uh, process is called as a direct tooling. So you have a direct uh, mold that is directly built out of an additive process. So the answer is true. Okay. Then other is prototype tooling where uh, you make a prototype of the tools using additive manufacturing technique that is termed as prototype tooling. So we have indirect tooling, direct tooling and another we have prototype tooling. We had covered this in the last lecture as well. So where you fabricate uh, prototypes of the tools. using additive manufacturing technology. So that is known as prototype tooling. So question four, dash is sequence of all the required activities that a company must perform to develop, manufacture and sell a product. So options are product manufacturing, product designing, product development life cycle or none of these. So we can see product manufacturing is just about the manufacturing of the product. Product manufacturing. This is uh, relevant or relate only to the manufacturing of the product. Manufacturing and a manufacturing uh, plant. Next option is product designing. So product de designing uh, relates only to the process of conceptualization of the problem solution. For example, you need a pen and that should be light in weight. So how that pen should be designed? 
or, or what uh, should be the geometry of that design that is product design and now product development life cycle so the term life cycle or the product development life cycle corresponds to all the steps that starts from identifying the need and ends at delivering ready to manufacture or ready to use product. This is product development life cycle. I uh, this was covered in uh, during the initial lecture, in initial uh, time of today's lecture. So the answer to this is product development life cycle because it starts at identifying the need and ends at having ready to use product. So when you have identified a need, then you go on to develop the solution and then you go on to manufacture it. So this is basically product designing. And this is product manufacturing, which are basically subsets of product development life cycle. These two this and this. So these two, they are the subsets of product development life cycle. Okay. So the next question, question 5 is the prototype is considered to be the first product completed in the production process. True or false? The answer is true. Yes. Prototype is what? Prototype is the initial product which is used to test the functionality, durability, aesthetic and the cost of the actual product. It is uh, nothing more than a scaled up or a scaled down nothing but a scaled up or a scaled down version of the final product. And it should perform exactly similar to the final product. So before beginning the batch production, we first manufacture a prototype, test its feasibility, its functionality and then only go on to have the batch production of the product. So, Prototypes are always manufactured before beginning the batch production. Question number 6. Which of the following group of activities are there in product development? So, we have recently seen a product development 
in extensive detail. So the options are identifying an opportunity or demand for a new product, creating the technical specifications for the new product idea, developing the manufacturing process to produce the pro new product or all of these. So as discussed, we had, uh, we had looked upon a generic product development process. It began with need identification. Then it went on to have design specification. So these two points cover the first two points. So need identification is identifying an opportunity or demand for a new product, if you even need that product in, uh, for you or not. So this is the first step in any generic product development process. Then based on your market analysis, may based on the requirements of the customer, you create technical specification. These are based on market analysis, and uh, based on the customer requirement and their feedback. And this market analysis pertains to analysis of the needs of the existing products of your competitor. So this is the second step. So after this design specification, you have a conceptual design and then a detailed design. So in this step, you actually finalize the design of your product. And then you go on to the production, wherein you plan all your manufacturing steps. Okay, so this is your third one. So developing the manufacturing process to produce the new product. So we can say that all these activities are there in the product development process. So the answer is all of these. So all these activities are present in a product development process. Moving on to the next question, question number seven. Prototype is produced using minimal manufacturing processes that the actual process will go through. True or false? So let us once again recall the definition of prototype. It is nothing but the final product only. Similar to the final product. It should function in the same way, same function, same appearance as the final product would look like. The only difference is that it can be a scaled up or scaled down version. So this is the geometrical aspect. For it to perform the similar function, similar appearance, have similar kind of durability and feasibility, a 
it should go through all the processes and not be minimal. It should go through all the processes. and not just the minimal ones. So, what happens is when uh, you skip uh, one or two manufacturing processes, there can be uh, differences in its strength or its endurance or its load bearing capacity. So, that will actually uh, affect the functions and uh, the endurance capacity of the product. So, in order to avoid that, it should uh, go through all the manufacturing steps and not the minimal ones. So, the answer is false. So, question number 8. Which of the following statements is are false about a product? Options are, in terms of marketing, a product is anything that can be offered to a market that might satisfy a want or a need. So, this statement is true actually. So, since the beginning of this lecture or the product development processes, we are saying that product, uh, any product and its development begins with the identification of the need. So, any product development begins with the identification of the need or the demand of the product. So, uh, option 1 is true. In terms of business, products are called as merchandise. This is also true. In the very first slide, we saw the definition of product and wherein we said that in terms of business, it can be called as a merchandise. Third option is a service is also a common product type. This is also true. There are various service based companies in today's market. These companies help you to forecast their profits, their losses or their sales. They provide services, for example, services like forecasting sales of the current trends, profit, market shares, etc. as per the current trends and previous data. So, since all the three statements are true, we say none of these statements about a product is actually false. Next question is, which of the following is or are the key factors for a successful product? So, options are unprepared mess. So, this is not a key factor for a successful product. So, if you are not prepared to deliver a certain product for a certain application, it can never be successful because you have not given a thought about it. Customer focus and market orientation. Yes, this can be a key factor because every product should always focus on the requirements of the customer. should also effectively consider the resources available in the market. 
So suppose today you are going to develop a product for 10 G. It's it's not going to be an effective thought because 10 G is still not there in the market. If you go and develop something for 4 G or 5 G, then it would really can be a successful product. Similar with other products. No, if your product is similar with uh, other products, then it cannot be successful. So uh, success then depends on the strengths and weaknesses of your competitors. So the correct answer is customer focus and market orientation. The last question for today is for uh, making a successful product, the members in the team are from research and development, engineering design, quality or all basic functions such as research and development, engineering and design, production, quality and sales. So the correct answer is the last option. Since these cannot work on independently as we have seen through the entire lecture, all these need to work in a collaborative manner to deliver effective solutions to the problem. So this was all for uh, today's lecture. So in case, uh, I hope uh, there are uh, no doubts. If there are any doubts, you can take them up. So these, uh, <coughs> hello, yeah, is anyone saying something? So this uh, lecture video will be available on uh, YouTube and uh, these uh, presentations will be provided to you through the post link. So if you have any doubts, you can always post in discussion forums as well or you can discuss them in these interaction sessions as well. So thank you everyone. Uh, let's meet in the next session in the next week on Saturday only. Thank you everyone.